As more and more of recruiting is done online, even bioinformaticians need to be tech savvy when it comes to perfecting their LinkedIn profile. Today's video is going to persuade you guys why it is so important to perfect that identity on the internet. If you're interested in seeing more content related to making it in the world of bioinformatics and especially just getting your foot in the door, make sure to hit the subscribe button to this channel, Genomics with Georgia, to stay updated on my latest videos. My name's Georgia and I am a bioinformatician. I graduated in 2020 and I've been working in the field for three years. I am also a massive advocate of having a good online presence. I have found LinkedIn so helpful for finding out about my field, gaining extra opportunities and networking with people in my field. LinkedIn has brought me so many benefits and I'm here to persuade you why it's really important that you should get on LinkedIn too. None of the advantages of having a LinkedIn profile are going to be applicable unless you fine tuned your profile. At the end of the video, we're going to touch on how to fine tune your profile. But until then, let's first touch on the major benefits for your bioinformatics career. So one of the first key benefits of having a good LinkedIn profile is the fact that you can connect with your colleagues. So you might think if you're a new starter or early career, I don't have any colleagues. Or if you're a lot later on in your career, you might think, oh, well, it's too late now to send them a request. Well, it is never too late to start making those connections. And also the earlier you do this, the better. So when I say making this network, what we're really talking about is if you've met somebody throughout your life that works in any kind of job, to be fair, it's valuable to connect with them and have them on your LinkedIn profile. I have people that I used to work in hospitality with on there. I have my friends on there that are in different fields and mainly I have people in the science sector. So connecting with people that you know is really, really important. So like I said, this can be even your friends in different careers. It can be colleagues from jobs not related to science if you've worked in different places prior to joining or wanting to join the field. And then it's also your uni pals or uni cohort, if you like, um, and also your lecturers, your professors, they're all on there too. So why is there value in connecting with people that you've met in your life on LinkedIn? So first of all, I think it can be quite inspiring to connect with your people that you know uh, who work. When you see people getting promotions or getting new jobs, it's really inspiring to see people succeeding and it can be quite motivating. Also, later on down the line, you can see what's happened to your previous class that you used to sit with in lectures. You can see what your friends from hospitality have gone on to do in the future. I think it's just quite nice to be able to watch other people's career paths. You never know, you might need these people for a work thing later on in life. So you never know who your colleagues are going to be in the future. You're never going to know who can give you something useful in the future. And you never know who you can give back to in the future. So I think having those connections is key. Um, and yeah, just do it sooner rather than later. Another great purpose of LinkedIn is connecting with people in jobs that you want to do because LinkedIn allows you to send requests to lots of people, even if they're not in your immediate network. And being able to connect with people in other institutes and companies allows you to start forming bridges across the industry, which means that you kind of get updates about what's happening in different places as people post regularly or well, whenever they post, but you get updates about what other people are doing in other fields and other institutes. And then this is just a great way of keeping in touch with the general space of science. Furthermore, it's really, really, really helpful to look at how someone in your dream role got that role. So a lot of people, well, I hope most people have quite uh, an extensive history on their LinkedIn profile. You can see where they did their undergrad, if they did a postgrad, if they did a postdoc, you can see if they did internships, 
what positions they had, how long they were junior before they became senior. You can see people's career path and it gives you an idea of how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And I think sometimes it can be quite easy to see a very narrow idea of how to progress in a certain space. But you can literally look at people's LinkedIn profiles who are really senior in companies or just positions you want to be and you can see how they got there. So being able to see this is so helpful and the more connections you have, the more easier it is to view other people's profiles that are kind of further out from your immediate network. So building your first network first then allows you to then view more of your wider and wider network, which is incredibly, incredibly helpful for planning your career. Also, a lot of people don't mind, I keep saying a lot of people, I feel like I'm maybe talking about myself, but I think some people don't mind if you drop them a message and say, hey, I'm really interested in your job. I'd love to learn about how you got there, what skills you recommend, blah, blah, blah. Um, sometimes they might just connect with you or sometimes they might chat to you. Sometimes they might send you a few messages, but it's always just, isn't it just mad that we can reach out to someone in Canada or, I just love Canada. You can reach out to someone in Canada um, and talk to them about their job and their career. And that's someone you were never gonna meet at a conference in your hometown. So, so, so good for learning about people's careers and connecting with people about their careers. LinkedIn is also becoming slightly less serious, I'm finding, and people are posting more relaxed, open and honest things on LinkedIn. So my feed is often filled with people who have lost their jobs and they're looking for a new job, something difficult's happened in their workplace. So you don't just get a kind of, you know, tunnel visioned, rose tinted glasses view of the world. I think you do get some quite honest posts about resilience and hardship, which is important because life isn't easy all of the time. Now, moving on to actual career opportunities from LinkedIn. So first of all, LinkedIn finds you the jobs. So even without premium, LinkedIn will recommend jobs that your profile is suited to. So again, if you have perfected your LinkedIn profile, it means that your job section suddenly is coming up with really, really relevant jobs to you. So before I perfected my LinkedIn profile, if I was just to search data scientist on LinkedIn, I would get data scientist jobs at random companies not related to my field. Finance, insurance, Bumble, um, <laughs> you know, you can get a data scientist job at all these different companies. Whereas because my profile is perfected and tailored, it means that all the job opportunities that I see via LinkedIn are all related to my field. They're all bioinformatics. They're wanting the skills that I've listed on my profile. They're in areas that I have connections in. It's all tailored to what you've put on your profile. So really, really great at finding relevant roles for you, even if you're not on premium. And it also goes the reverse way. So recruiters who are people who have a job, their sole purpose is to find people to fill roles and they're all on LinkedIn searching for candidates to fill their roles. So if you've got a really good LinkedIn profile and you put all those keywords on your profile that are related to your field and your skill set, when recruiters are on their LinkedIn recruiter fancy mode, and they're gonna be searching for these keywords to find candidates. And then if you've got a snazzy, jazzy LinkedIn profile, you're gonna get suggested to them. Recruiters can reach out to you via messages. They can send you job opportunities and also they can just connect with you. So I found that a lot of recruiters just want to be connected on LinkedIn. And it means that you might not be looking at the moment, but in the future, they're posting jobs all the time. You can see what the field is like. You can get an understanding of different salaries that different jobs are offering at, at the time and that's just a really good way of getting jobs <laughs> being brought to you rather than you having to go and hunt for the jobs yourself. Also recruiters are really nice to be connected with on LinkedIn because a lot of them who are quite active will be posting just about general things in the field. So they'll be posting about latest updates, new companies that are starting out, posting general career tips. They're just really great people to have in your network. To connect with the recruiters so the jobs can come from them. 
to you. The next thing I've loved about LinkedIn is the side kind of side hustle opportunities it's brought me. So it was only when I started being active on LinkedIn, when I started posting if I'd done something fun at work, if I went to a certain event. When I started to become more active, people started to notice me more. I started to get a bigger network on LinkedIn. And then I started to get opportunities being offered to me. Whether that's attending a private event or conference that isn't an open invite, that's invitation only. Or whether that's being invited on a podcast or whether that is having people reach out to you asking for career advice. It's only by being active that you gain these extra opportunities. And I've just loved being able to grasp that and use that. And if I wasn't active on LinkedIn, none of that would have happened. Especially if you're really interested in doing public engagement, science communication, or if you just wanna share things about your work with a wider community. If you're active on LinkedIn, people are gonna find you and then they're gonna to come to you with opportunity. The last section that I think LinkedIn is really, really helpful for is just skills and career advice. So if you start following or connecting with regular posters who are people in the field, they'll be posting little GitHub repos they found helpful. They'll be posting medium blogs of how to do a certain task. Like I said, recruiters are often posting career advice. I've just found it a really great space to learn about the field and I think sometimes in science and academia we find Twitter is the kind of usual hub for sharing more scientific things but LinkedIn is the place for sharing career things and I think it's really really valuable to have your finger in both pies as it were because when we're early on in our career you know we need advice we need to know how things work in different companies in industry in whatever so being able to absorb that information from you know real people posting about their real experiences in terms of their career their promotions their redundancies it's really helpful to read these things like i said um in order to reap all these benefits of linkedin you have to have a very, very nice tuned LinkedIn profile. So when we're talking about a fine tuned LinkedIn profile, we're talking about a few things. So you're gonna wanna have a profile photo. I know we don't have profile photos on CVs in the UK, but LinkedIn, putting a face to a name is really important. So having a nice professional photo is really good. And then think about what your cover photo is. So it could be something to do with your workplace. It might be your work location. Um, but having a good cover photo, the big banner at the top, um, is also very helpful for kind of getting you noticed if someone clicks your profile. It should kind of tell the viewer something about you. Next up, you've got your bio. So the little bio doesn't need to be too long. You just want to sum up in that bio who you are. So think about having three main statements that kind of encapture what it is that you bring in your career. Are you a technical professional, um, you know, skilled in X, Y, and Z? Are you an advocate for um, inclusion and diversity? Are you a you know, public engagement enthusiast? But short, snappy, someone should read that bio and know what you're about. And putting key words in is very important. Then essentially, you wanna make sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date. So have your education in there, have your current job in there. I think it's nice to stick in, if you have them, your kind of part-time jobs you did at university, if you're still close to university. If you've worked at Costa or Greggs or Tesco, especially during the pandemic, you know, I think showing that as part of your career development is really good to have on LinkedIn, especially if you've got less actual scientific work experience. And then when you're describing your job history, make sure that you have key bullet points again about what you did in those specific roles. Sometimes a CV can be really short, so LinkedIn is a way of having a bit of a longer explanation that doesn't quite fit in the CV sometimes, especially for those jobs that were quite a way back um, that you don't really want to highlight on a CV anymore. But yeah, having those bullet points, listing the key skills that you did, um, any projects that you did, 
a nice summary of what you did at each place. And then at the bottom of your profile, you'll notice there is a skills section. So having your up-to-date skills on here is very key because it's one of the things that recruiters can filter for when they're looking to send out jobs to prospective candidates. Have the skills that you've got on there. So if you can code, put your coding languages on there. LinkedIn allows you to take an assessment of that coding skill. And then if you pass that, that's again something that can help recommend jobs for you and make you highlighted to recruiters. So take the coding tests on LinkedIn, list the languages that you're proficient in, and then try and list other things that you are good at, that you're skilled in. And I'd probably suggest in order to refine these down, have a look at job adverts on LinkedIn. And some of them will say like suggested skills and then try and translate those from job applications to your LinkedIn profile. So it's making sure that the algorithm finds you. There's also loads of sections about certifications, achievements. Yeah, so even if you've done a little, you know, three week course on Code Academy, put that on your profile. You know, it's a skill, it's not a degree. So it doesn't go in the education section, but it can go in your certifications section. There's also honors and awards, you know, so I've put in, um, so I, I got offered PhDs and I didn't take them, but I put those in my honours and awards section to show that I'd been offered um, positions that I rejected. So that's something you could do. Yeah, we can do another video on like more specific LinkedIn things, but that's what I mean when I say perfect your profile. It's got to have the keywords in it. It's got to be up to date um, and it's got to have all the things that you don't really think would go on a LinkedIn. So like I said, if you've done any online courses, stick them on. If you've done hospitality work and you don't have much scientific postgraduate experience, stick it on. And make sure those skills are relevant to what you wanna do in your bioinformatics career. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. And I hope I have persuaded you how important LinkedIn is for scientists. It's not just for business professionals. It is for scientists to share what they're doing, to look at what other institutes are doing, to see people's careers and how to get there, and for people to bring jobs to you rather than you, well, and you can go to the jobs as well. So I'm Georgia, this has been Genomics with Georgia, and I will see you guys again on another video.